of difficult runs. He's had rivalries with Stardust, with San, with Duck Duck. That's just to name a few. All right, well, let's get into it. Ultra Zeem Stronghold of all maps is game number one. As we have spawning up to the top left-hand corner, our blue Protoss representing the Alliance. It is Naniwa. And down to the bottom left, we have our red Protoss. It is Jangman Chul. It is MC. What a big map. What an interesting one to start this. We yeah. hardly ever see Protoss versus Protosses on here. And because it's such a big map, we do see a lot of focus once we get past the early game around Zealot Charge, Archon, Immortal play. Because it's so wide open yes. throughout the middle, it's a really good army composition to have. Colossus are very good on smaller maps. For example, Yonsu? let's go Yonsu. Smaller mm -hmm. choke points, lots of areas where the splash damage can do critical amounts of damage. But on this map, you can get flanked. You have to play so slowly with Colossus. And if you do, that gives the time for the opponent to utilize the big map. He can start taking bases faster. He can go up to Stargate and Tempest faster. So there's a lot of area for the Templar player to be much, much stronger. Yeah, but it's also you know important to go back on what you said at the beginning of that statement, which was before you, uh, after you get past the start of this game, because we've seen MC play very aggressively sometimes on this map. We've seen him go for three gateway pressure and then into blink and just trying to kill off his opponent very, very early. Uh, but even then, if you get something like uh, a Stargate versus Stargate opener, and then you get to that weird situation where neither refuses to stop making Phoenix, then you get some crazy games from that as well. So there's so yeah. many great options in PvP uh, on a map like this. And I was actually just checking Twitter. If you want to you know, send us some tweets, make sure to hashtag WCS. I sent yes. out a tweet just now asking, who does who do you want to see go through uh, in this group? And obviously, a lot of people are like, yeah, both. And I'm like, well, <laughs> yeah, but I mean, who do you want to go see through us? Yeah. And uh, a lot of people were in favor of Naniwa here. A lot ah. of people wanted him to see him do well. And uh, there are some MC fans out there, are definitely a lot of MC fans out there who want to see him go through as well. But this is going to be a good one. Both players have opened up very similar when it comes to their bills, but we do have an earlier scout from MC. And also, he scouted in the correct way, so he sees exactly what he's playing against. Whereas Naniwa is completely in the dark. But it doesn't matter that he's in the dark. Uh, he's doing the same. <laughs> he's decided to throw a pilot up here. And with his gas income, this could be a Stargate Claris. This is going to become he's the got spot. a lot of gas. Yeah, this is going to become the spot where everyone scouts out against Naniwa yeah. if we're not careful. Um, what is it going to be? MC's in the dark about this one, that's for sure. Uh, he needs to go over there, <laughs> but it's going to be Twilight Council. Twilight. Okay, so he had enough gas to throw down the Stargate, but it is going to be Twilight. It's almost the same. He's leaving it there for the yeah. Dark Shrine. Oh, my God. And uh, MC would have seen the probe leave, but would have just expected it to go scout. So he's not exactly going to go check up there. We do have uh, a sentry, and it's going to be an expansion play from MC. He's gone one sentry and a second sentry, and then it's going to expand. This build is strong against what Naniwa seems to be doing, but it is weaker against a lot of other things. For example, it's weak against blink play. It's... Mm -hmm. Not super strong against Stargate play either, but it's very good against expansion builds of Naniwa could go for, good against pressure builds, good against DT builds, depending on when he gets the detection down. And oh, he's not going to see that pro moving out either, but still Naniwa has not seen the route in which his opponent has spawned, so he's going to have to send that probe around and find out exactly what's going on. The probe re-enters the base, sees two extra gateways going down. But doesn't know if it's Dark Shrine, Blink, or anything here. Yeah. So alarm bells have to be ringing for him. So he must want to get some form of detection down. And there comes the robotics facility. Going to be useful for ob obviously the, the observers. Going to be useful for immortals. But with four gateways here, let's just put a scenario there where the DT doesn't work. What happens if Nani would just bust a ramp with, uh, with an Archon yeah. that he can build? So we do have an Oracle. <gasps> MC's looking to find out what it is. By the way... Naniwa, again, still has no idea where his yeah. opponent is. He had this problem before, and he's got this problem again. And he's put this pylon down in a location that he thinks, well, if my opponent's over on this right-hand side, then that's great. But right now, this is he's it's probability. And unfortunately, he's come on up on the wrong end of the stick here with this probability. Well, the four gateways have been spotted here. Does mm. MC get detection? Or does he go straight for immortal protection? I think he goes immortal. Oh, he's going for the observer. Yeah. I, th I thought he was going to go immortal. I, the reason that I thought that is because he was like, oh, well, four gateways, you know, uh, I guess. But, uh, you know, it was going to be a lot of stalkers or something like that. But All at right. this point in time, that's a, that was a little there's, bit late. There's going to be almost two photon overcharges. There's a lot of force fields, which isn't going to be ideal, actually, if he just breaks up the ramp. with Because sentries aren't very good 
Um, they're good at force fields. I'm on MC's vision. I want to see what he sees. Well, he still sees gateways. A lot of gateways. Stalker pokes up. MC's going to see that. He's got an immortal on the way, but he's got double photon overcharge and detection. Yeah, this is a lot of firepower that he has at his disposal for the defense. Uh, Naniwa. Oh, he sees the Dark, Dark Templar. And, and he's not going to even lose a sentry here. Yeah. Oh, great, so great, great, great play. And now with detection, he must really go to an Archon, you'd think, right? With the two oh, DTs yeah. that he has. He has no other option. Uh, but there's an immortal. There's a second one. And, uh, then thought, and then double fought and overcharge still. He can always retreat to his nexus. This is just spiraled out of control, and MC is building up a great defense for something that's probably not going to kill him off. Uh, Naniwa has to make miracles work if he's going to actually do this. I, I don't see how he has even the firepower capable of doing this. Where's the DTs gone? They're there. Oh, they're there. They're with they're the back there. of the icon. They're there. All right. Let's find out. This looks like a hold for me. Can Naniwa make this possible, Kolaris? He certainly could. Do we actually throw us down a force field? He he's going to bring the he's gonna retreat. The he's going to retreat to the Photon Overcharge here by the looks of it. All he has to do is buy time, get a few more units here, and he has the army capable of dealing with this. Yep. And this is very, very difficult. MCs actually could go for DTs himself. It would take yeah. a long time, but oh, that's I just a scenario he could put himself in. They're actually taking a fight in the Photon Overcharge here. He's going to target down the, uh, the, uh, the Archon, which means he can then force field. Yeah. Great. Use of his units there. Really fantastic usage. And this, this is right. not going to work, Claris. He has to retreat back and then yeah, try something MC's else. MC's going to go for his own DTs. He's saying, come on, bro. Yeah. You build, cool. you don't have detection. You just die. Yeah, and there's another Archon morphing in he here for Naniwa. He has to, but... because he has to break force fields, and there's so many of exactly. them. Exactly. Yeah, well, there's not a huge amount left, but once they keep banking up energy, yeah. then that's when it comes along and makes a bit of a hindrance here for Naniwa. And Naniwa is just spreading himself out. I think he might just go for an expansion Demolish off this. Demolish your going to look for, for, uh, for Naniwa, and he will see the Dark Shrine. That's nice of it, at least. Yeah, he sees it. So now he knows he has to get detection, or he needs to kill his opponent right now. Uh, yeah, um, and th that's the thing. It's like, even if he tries to... Well, oh, okay, he's not going to try and expand. He's just going to block this with pylons. Oh, it's perfect. Those Zealots and Archons for a while aren't really going to do a whole lot. Yeah, look at this. This is, this is rough. Uh, this is rough. You're, you're, you're put in a very, very difficult position. It's well, He's killing off a lot of workers at the back, actually, here. He got six or seven with this mothership yeah, call, but, but it doesn't matter. Like, he can't... He has to get a robo because he saw the Dark Trine, and he can't really sit outside of here and soft contain his opponent and eventually get a Nexus because he doesn't have all the minerals to get robo, observer, Nexus. Yeah. It takes so, so long for him. Well, Naniwa's going to fall back on an expansion himself. He does have a force field um, with the sentry now warped in, but... Doesn't bother the boss task because he goes right one person. Oh, the sick. one person could drop any DTs. It's this is a weird PvP here to start yeah. things off on Alpha Zim Stronghold. Gotta say, then there's the Dark Templars now warping in and gonna mosey on over there. And he's blocking everything. He's like, nope, no, nope, nope, not allowed in. These zealots aren't allowed in either, unfortunately for them. All right, so this is taking a turn for the worst here for Naniwa. Uh, army supplies 51 to 39 probes. Uh, very much so in the lead here of MC. Uh, and he's just looking for the kill. Ooh, loads up the Immortals. Cool, cool idea. And, well, my Dark Templar, I was going to get too much. Well, he's got to wait for the Observer, but... Oh, can he get... Nope. Oh. Nope, yeah, nope. And another Dark Templar, just moving out onto the right-hand side here for MC, but... Fantastic position for MC. He could actually force the cancel on this. Uh, oh, no, the Stalkers are there. Never mind. Uh, he could get a few stalkers, <laughs> um, but he has to be careful because he doesn't want to lose the Watt Prism and will evacuate and out. Yeah, this is a beautiful position here for MC, who can either be aggressive or just for he doesn't really. He's got so many options to choose from. You can throw down a bunch of gateways and just attack. You can actually tech up from this position. MC could go double forge. It really doesn't matter. He can go ahead and take a third base. There's yeah, multiple positions to be in. He's got double his opponent's income, pretty much. He's got double the army supply. It doesn't really matter what he chooses. So he's, he's, going, he's chosen one forge, um, zealot charge. I'd imagine the third base and Templar archives won't be too far away either. And when it comes to researching blink versus charge here in these situations, unfortunately, I just feel that it puts Naniwa on the back foot. If, if MC gets a lot of zealots um, and just charges straight at them and these stalkers have to blink against that, it's a hard time for those stalkers, yeah. gotta say. Really well, hard Naniwa's time. got blink, and if he can use blink, he will destroy the warp prism if it's caught out of position. So that's what he's looking would yeah. be nice uh, with his blink play. But overall, he needs to have a game plan. Um, uh, we don't know what it is yet. He hasn't really chosen. And MC's gonna look to find out what it is to try to come back into this game. 
And it's it's Archons, it's Templar Archives actually. Um, and MC pokes in, one Phoenix sees nothing, the other ones... Okay, so they see the Templar Archives and MC clicks on it. So I wouldn't be surprised if MC says, you know, if you go for that, I can also... I could I could build Archons too, I have the money. Yeah, you could happily <laughs> and he do does. so. He adds on the Templar Archives. He has the money um, not only in-game, but in, our, in real life as well. Yeah, he can buy Templar Archives in real life. Yeah. But from this position, can either attack or defend, it doesn't matter. Um, he's in a great position no matter what, just army supply is huge. He's got um, he's got no pylon on the other side of the map, but he, of course he has the warp prism. It's up to him. He's getting the attack upgrades. Um, he could attack with plus one when it finishes. Especially since he has a lead of six immortals to none. Yeah, but it's kind of hard to uh, attack up yeah. a ramp unless you force yourself up that ramp. Yeah. Which can cause a lot of casualties. And with a lot of cannons being warped in for MC, three cannons, he may just uh, sit outside. Well, he is sitting outside his front base. He's no longer just going to sit on two bases or attack. He's going to sit there. Yeah. And this is the, one of the risks that Naiwa runs, playing that kind of style earlier on. I mean, yes, he can defend these two bases, but if, if you're playing against a competent uh, Protoss player who defends your initial assault, and then you're sitting back on these two bases yeah. hunkered down, your opponent's just going to take the whole map. They don't really care at that point. Uh, and no, it's MC's not up, doing that. MC's winning, so it, it's, up, it's, it's not up to him to try to you know, change the, the state of the game. Yeah. He's winning, so it's up to Naniwa to do that. And with the Stargate coming down, I'm not sure what he's looking to do here. Even if he adds in a couple of Void Rays, that's not that useful. What is he going to do with the Fleet Beacon? What is he going to do with Phoenix? Maybe an Oracle could get back in and try to backstab MC, but overall, I think this is a, a game one from MC. It was just too much of a lead that he had earlier on. Yeah, he's looking good, looking strong. I was theorizing maybe he gets Phoenix and tries to pick up all the Immortals, but even that's a hazard here against the huge, huge army that we're seeing here yeah. from MC. Those Phoenix are flying and then just get killed off pretty quickly. And Naniwa sees the army here, so he's now preparing his defense. He's spreading out his units. And even if he brings Stalkers back from his natural to help, the Warp Prism could go in, so he kind of has to leave them there. Four extra gateways for Naniwa to help against this. But MC's just going to force himself up this ramp. Yeah, he doesn't really care. He leads with the Archon. Very, very important here as he pulls back for a second. Uh, well, it's just... He's almost goading him at this it's, point. It's sometimes... Well, he's going to do it anyway. It's the boss toss. He does what he wants. He doesn't give a crap. Yeah. He doesn't care about game rules. A game rule here is like, yeah, you shouldn't really go up the ramp there because you, you're going to take a lot of damage as you go up there and your opponent's got a much better position. But MC's like, I don't care. I am the boss toss. I do what I want. He can sit outside here. He's actually adding on a lot more gateways, so he may just sit outside in yeah. his base. I th I th there's no need for him to go. Some, bro. Yeah. This is uh, unfortunate for Naniwa because he actually can't do anything in this position at all. I mean, he's getting charged, he's getting plus two, but he's behind in every single aspect. He's getting immortals. He's behind in that aspect. There's the robo bay going down for MC behind this. So what he, MC probably does is he sits out here forever, he gets Thermal Lance, and then he just pokes away at him for a while. And that's how he wins. Oh, Dark Shot Templar not really doing too much. Oh, he gets past those cannons, yeah, he's actually. he's going to get a couple of probes here. And MC will warp in, but it's nothing that he's really annoyed at at this position. He's just baiting Naniwa. Naniwa has got to find a way to attack in a minute. But even then, it, with MC sitting out here, with a, with a smiley face of an army. where yeah. na, na, You see that, how MC's the kind of smile, and Naniwa's like the kind of frown. <laughs> because of the way that it's positioned. <laughs> um, the Naniwa will have to come down, because Naniwa needs a new base. He, he's going to need more money. His main yeah. base is almost mined out, while MC's mining quite happily from three. All right, here's what he does. He gets a warp prism, evacuates one probe out around the north, and gets a base somewhere else. Somehow, that's, that's the, not going to work. No, probably not. There's a uh, high Being Templar hopeful. here, which is trying to get to the uh, Mothership Core wherever that's gone. Where? where, where, right where at who? The back. What happened? I'm saying there's a high Templar at the front that's looking for the Mothership Core. He's sending out Hallucinated Phoenix to have a quick look, see where it is, oh, for a feedback. Yes. An MC, look at this. Come on, Naniwa. Mm -hmm. Come to Big Daddy MC. Come play with me. I don't think Naniwa wants to play, I'll be honest. <laughs> I think he's just going to sit in his home well, and not come out. Yeah, but then the MC can take a fourth base. And Naniwa right now, he's like, Dad, I don't want to play with him. Tell him to leave me alone. Stop knocking on the front door. I'm not coming out to play today. MC's outside just jumping up and down at the window. He's like, come on. He's like throwing rocks at the window. Come on, man. Come outside. Come on. Let's go play in the sun. Let's go play football. Uh, these zealots play rough, though, man. They play rough. I'm, I don't think uh, I don't think Naniwa wants any of that. And I'm pretty sure MC's enjoying this. 
Look, there's this one Colossus that's going to come along. Oh, now he wants to set up a flank. He's actually pulled. Ooh. That was pretty nice. He warped in a lot of units on the right-hand side to pull MC out of position, but still, he can't get down uh, that ramp properly. All those Blink Stalkers just got obliterated by those Immortals. And yeah, there's a lot of Zealots on this right-hand side here for a Naniwa, but... Oh, actually, the Stalkers got themselves the Colossus. Yeah, but he's not going to win this. Yeah. GG, MC picks up game number one against Naniwa. That was about as good as the... Two, as we have... Spawning down to the south as our blue Protoss. Currently one game down, unfortunately for him. Hailing from Sweden, it is Naniwa. And up to the north. Currently one game up. Match point for him. Looking to advance onto the round of 16. It's MC. MC. Funny that. MC. He can actually rap. What? He can actually rap. Have you heard In MC Korean. rap? Korean rap. Yes, I have. Carmack is a witness. Is it good? It was great. I can't really judge rap. It was rap. absolutely great. Yeah? Well, I didn't understand a single word. Oh, okay. Yeah, fair play. But it was fantastic. I mean, Carmack, he might be listening, he might not be listening, but he was definitely witness to this. And it was really, really weird because <laughs> we were driving. This is a quick, funny, quick story for you guys. Oh, I think I've heard this. But we, cool. we were randomly, I think it, um, maybe after food, I'm not sure why, but we were in Carmack's car. Yeah. And Carmack was like, hey, listen to this music. This is, I think it was Polish rap at the time or some Polish kind of... Dexter music is Carmack listens to. <laughs> and then we're listening to it. And MC, as MC does, just turns the sound off. And we're like, what? You, all right. You don't like it or what? And then he grabs his phone, puts on beats, just like some beats, and just starts rapping in Korean I, for like a uh, minute. And we were there like, what is going on? This crazy <laughs> Korean in the front seat is just rapping. And that is a true story. You he know can rap. You know what's going to happen now. There's going to be photoshops with him with hats Ooh, on. And where's like, Nanny was Pro going? I was curious as to that as well. I think he may be, well, trying to do something similar again. Mm, this looks like a Stargate. Stargate. Woo, woo, woo. <laughs> yeah, it looks like it. Um, MC was able to scout pretty fast, though. He actually pokes into the main base. He did check his natural in case there was a proxy, too. But he goes in here, um, but doesn't really... He didn't see the probe missing. And it's going to be very, very difficult to know that there's a probe out there. Oops. Uh, yeah, you're right. It's it was... But he can see that there's three and three, mm -hmm. which is obviously a large gas income. And then he's going to be keeping an eye on where that third pylon is going down. If he doesn't see one, then he may end up yeah. being a little bit suspicious. But what happens a lot on this map uh, from Protoss players is that the Mothership Core that's built by MC, obviously, um, can actually go to the top right and also sometimes to the top left to have a look outside his main base. Mm -hmm. That's why we don't see so many proxies anymore. Out, right outside the Protoss player's base is because the Mothership Core can usually get a good scout. But it's rallied right over the other side of the map very quickly here, Sean. Yeah, he's going to pressure with the Zealot and Chrono Boosted Stalker and the Mothership Core. This is uh, generally... Wait, is he going to throw up Chrono Boost again into the gateway? Because but, uh, The thing is, if Minchel doesn't have anything to defend, then the Oracle just blitzes the probe line. Yeah. It's that simple. Even if um, Naniwa takes damage, he's still going to have his own Mothership Core, which is actually looking for what MC's doing. Remember, he hasn't done anything. Naniwa's using the, the Mothership Core and should come back with it too. But he will have a Photon Overcharge soon, and there will be a Stalker out there. He absolutely needs to come back with that Mothership Core because this is a tactic that we see often from MC, who throws yeah. his Chrono Boost into these uh, structures so aggressively to put on this kind of aggression. So it's not uh, out of the realms of possibility that MC normally puts yeah. this on. So there is the... Th Naniwa shouldn't be able to uh, lose anything here. He's about to have 90 energy. He sees his yeah. units. It's not that far away. He may lose a couple of probes, maybe, that but how many probes is the Oracle going to kill? Yeah, the Stalker's not being too aggressive to get to the Mothership Core either. It does get one shot off there, but he realizes how much energy there is, and he's going to have to get on out yeah. just before that activates. And he, he'll have to activate it. With double Stalkers, it's too much pressure, yeah. I think. He's, he's buying his time, doesn't want to waste it. But there's the Oracle. Ah, use it! Oh, that was a little bit late there. He could have got maybe one or two more kills. But there's only one Stalker here to compete against this. Uh, and oh no! no! Not, not the plates! Oh, the plates! That was 45 damage to the plates! That was... Oh, that was another probe? <sighs> and uh, now MC's had a heads up. He's not even that far behind. He actually recalled back with his Mothership Core. And now we set up quite convincingly. So from this position, the game usually turns into leave the Mothership Core at home if you're MC and use the Photon Overcharge with your Stalkers for now to deflect any Oracle attack. And then eventually utilize your Blink. 
Ooh. A void ray. Void ray. Mmm. Naniwa. <laughs> Naniwa. So seductive, Sean. Mmm. Void rays. So he's gone three gateways. He's got the Oracle Live and Void Rays. But they got Blink. Blink would, is good, but so are Void Rays. I would like uh, a cologne, like a, a fragrance called Void Rays. That would be yeah? that would be nice. It would be so sexy. I think so. Ooh, and bye bye. MCC's the stalkers here. The Oracle's still looking around to see if he can poke in. There's not a photon overcharge. I'm interested to see how this works. Void Rays versus Blink here. Uh, the Void Ray is going to do so much damage, and it, it will be more than one as well. Yeah, this is going to be uh, quite a lot of pressure that I was putting on. 25 army supply against Blink's 14. Ready. Ooh, There's the Oracle too. Charge up, charge up, charge up, charge up the passion. Ah! Get. Okay, so he's going to actually charge up there, and he's killing off a lot of units actually here, Sean. He needed to, uh, well, yeah, he's <laughs> killing off a lot here, Clive. So I was going to say, he could have targeted on the Void. It's too late now. He's, so much damage has been dealt. Ooh. And if what's look at the probes. Well, it's not actually that different. Yeah. He does survive, but the Mothership Core's gone. That's but there nice. is now Blink. So these Stalkers now have to be a little bit careful. But I, I think we should be seeing another Void Ray, right? You'd imagine another Void Ray be, to be built. Yeah, and the thing is, he whopped in the three more Stalkers. So he's going to be going Blinkless. He's just going to have more Stalkers without Blink. He's got to so be very careful, yeah. He Ooh, does. Nice blink. Oh, wow. That was actually brilliant. He wasted an entire volley there and yeah. got a stalker. And whoop. He doesn't have blink off cooldown. Uh, so the numbers might be able so to help out him. He really does. Because right now, with those five stalkers against this, oh, he needs to blink on back. He's actually focusing those. And he gets drawn towards the probe line there for a second. That one stalker is actually blocked in by another stalker. Uh, Good so hold so far from MC, using his blink really, really well in this in this scenario, and also just normal micro. There's more stalkers coming in. There was three more stalkers built here. Yeah, that really shows the power of blink against. Um, oh, you know. he's got to be careful of the three more stalkers. Ooh, there's one low health one and another low health one. Oh, oh, nice blink there back. But at the same time, he still needs to continue on falling back. Naniwa realizes Ooh. that his pylon is way too far away to continue to reinforce against an opponent that has superior tech. So this pylon yeah. is absolutely essential. And remember, to go over up. time, is that Naniwa is going to be able to build more stalkers because has more income. Yeah. But this is a nice catch, actually, by MC. Really nice catch of a Stalker. And it's another one. Yeah. Oh, this is actually spiraling out of Three now. Stalkers for nothing there. there. There is no way that MC's going to lose versus just Stalkers. There needs to be another plan to come out from Naniwa. This is not going to work. Is it back to blink. the link? Oh, he's or going blink. DTs. It could be DTs, realizing that his opponent doesn't have tech. But from this position... Another Oracle. I'm pretty sure MC wouldn't just go for a kill. I would be surprised. Because you'd, you'd be thinking that there could be DTs, because he doesn't have... Any detection. We'll mm. see. We'll see. Well, there's another Oracle coming out here from Naniwa, so that's good a good choice. But at the same time, MC still taking precautions. He still has two Stalkers in his mineral line. So he's he's covering it, things. He's doing real. Yeah, MC just pokes up. Look at this. Just no fear. He doesn't care. No fear. Um, there's a few more Stalkers. Oh, actually, that's Oracle, the probe and the Stalker. Oracle, but two Stalkers. Slow activation on the Oracle. Ah. Uh, he actually could die. Uh, blink, blink, blink with these two. He has blink, he has blink. <gasps> oh. MC's going oh. for a kill. He's got a close pile on Claris. Ah, oh, that Oracle could have died, but in the end it didn't. But yeah, he is. This is, how many stalkers does he have? 12 to 6. And, and a weakened Oracle that's not going to do a Anyone needs units. He's going to go for blink here himself. The Oracle's still alive, but there's still two stalkers there. It's 12 stalkers, excluding the two, then it's 10. Mm-hmm. Versus six of Naniwa. As long as he just blinks back defensively here and trades uh, yeah, yeah. shields for kills, he's going to be fine, uh, is MC. And he's doing it really nicely. The control's good here. And good control by Naniwa, though, considering he doesn't have blink, trying to keep those weakened ones as live as best as possible. Four of them saved during all of that, but he's still having a hard time struggling against the blink play that we're seeing here from MC. And... Yeah, this is, this is hard. Naniwa is using his high ground vision well, and he's getting another gateway and blink and does have a good economy, but that Oracle is useless. It isn't going to do anything, and MC is going to keep on hammering this down. If Naniwa survives to blink, there's a chance, but it's very low at this point. Look there's, at this. Whoa, yeah. aggressive blink on forwards. He knows he can actually just flank this from the northern position whilst the Zealots tank a lot yeah. of the shots at the south, kills off a lot, and he can even blink out defensively here. So MC just has superior numbers. Uh, great game from him. GG. And he takes 2-0. Takes the 2-0 of Naniwa.